Hey everyone, today we'll be doing a linear search on arrays. So let's get started. So what is a linear search? A linear or sequential search involves inspecting each element in a list in order to find the element we're looking for. So let's take this array as an example. Let's try to find the element with data 11. So first, we inspect the first element. Are you 11? No. The next element. Are you 11? No. The next element. Are you 11? No. The next element. Are you 11? Yes. We successfully performed a linear search and found the element with the data 11. Now, how would this look like in code? Here we have a method called find. It has two parameters. The first parameter is x. It'll be the data we're looking for. Our second parameter, nums, is going to be the array we're going to search for that data in. So the first thing we have inside this method is a for loop. It starts at index 0 and it goes up until the end of the array and increments by 1 every time. Inside of our for loop, we have a conditional that checks if the nums of i is equal to our data x. So all that says is if the nums of that index, which is the value at index i, is it equal to our data. If it is, we'll return the index. If it isn't, we'll return negative 1. Now the reason we return negative 1 is because we know that an array starts at index 0. So it can never ever be negative 1. So if we return negative 1, then we know we did not find that element. So let's get to it. So let's perform a linear search on this array. Let's try to find the element with the data 11. So the first thing we do is go to our for loop. At this point, our i is equal to 0. We check, is nums of i equal to our data 11? No, nums of 0 is equal to 1, so it's not equal to 11. So we continue with our for loop. This time, our i is equal to 1. We check. Is nums of i equal to 11? Well, nums of 1 is equal to 4, and 4 is not equal to 11. So again, we continue with our for loop. At this point, our i is equal to 2. So, is nums of 2 equal to 11? Well, nums of 2 is 2, and 2 is not equal to 11. So again, we proceed with our for loop. At this point, our i is equal to 3. Well, is nums of 3 equal to 11? Well, yes, nums of 3 is 11. So we simply return 3. And we're done. We've successfully performed a linear search. Now, let's see what an unsuccessful linear search looks like. Here, we have the same method find with the same parameters x and nums. Now, we proceed with our for loop. At this point, our i is equal to 0. So, we check if nums of 0 is equal to 11. Well, nums of 0 is equal to 1, and 1 is not equal to 11. So, we proceed with our for loop again. At this point, i is equal to 1. So we check, is nums of 1 equal to 11? Well, no, nums of 1 is 4, and 4 is not equal to 11. So our i is equal to 2 at this point. We check, is nums of 2 equal to 11? Well, no again, nums of 2 is 2, and 2 is not equal to 11. At this point, i is equal to 3. And as we can see, i is now equal to nums.length. So we've broken the condition that i is less than nums.length. And at this point, all we do is return negative 1. And that's how we perform an unsuccessful linear search. Let's move on to the complexity analysis. For the time complexity, performing a successful search is going to take linear time. Because, in the worst case, our element might be the last element in our array. So we'd have to inspect every single element in the array to get to that last element. And that's going to be a linear time operation. For an unsuccessful search, we're inspecting the entire array, and we don't find the elements we're looking for. So similarly, that's also going to be a linear time operation. Now, let's move on to the space complexity. Now, since we're given the input array, we're not going to include that in our space complexity. So for both a successful and unsuccessful search, the size of our array does not affect the amount of space our method uses. Our method still uses a constant amount of space, so we have a constant space complexity. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like and subscribe button. See you in the next video.